Right, today we're going to videotape the uh, 510 air brake operational check and the sheet you would be using when conducting this uh, ops check in the shop would be your uh, 510 uh, air brake op check. Uh, we're going to do it on the board back here but uh, you would be doing it on a live dish. The board is available for practice at any time and has all the same components you would find on any of the trucks in the shop. Uh, but it's a little easier to see and do here for the first time. So we'll go down through step by step. If this were a vehicle, step one would be to block the wheels, prevent the tractor trailer configuration from moving. Uh, the second part then would be to start the truck and run the engine until it reaches the governor cutout. Now, remember, cutout is usually between 120 and 130, depending on the age of the vehicle. Uh, if you don't have the engine where it can run or the truck can run, you can use shop air. That's what we'll use here today, shop air into our board. Uh, I'll turn the ignition on and you'll hear a buzzer and a light will come on. And then we'll air it up. In the cab, you will see your primary and secondary gate is coming up. At a certain point, the light and buzzer will go out. So we'll let this go down so we get the uh, governor to cut out. Notice the light and the buzzer went out. That's a good sign. We'll be talking about that later. So when it reaches cut out, the air dryer should purge. We should be in that 120 to 130 range, as you see on your primary and secondary gauges in the back. So then the step number three is check the operation of the primary and secondary reservoir check valves by draining the supply air reservoir. Primary, secondary tanks have a one-way check valve right here okay, going into it. So it lets air from your primary or from your supply system into both primary and secondary, but should not let it bleed back. That's what we should see here. Open the valve for the supply. Shut our buzzer off just so we can talk. You should see no drop on your primary and secondary gauges if these check valves are working. And we're right around the 120 range, right about where the air dryer cut us off at, 120 to 125. The buzzer came in at about 60 psi. So that's the next question. What pressure does a buzzer come on? You would record that on your sheet. <clears throat> if there's a problem with the check valve, we would see it, but we, uh, we would see it on the gauges here in the dash, they would drop down. Check valves are working, so it's holding pressure past those check valves. The next thing they want you to do is install the caps on the glad hand connectors and release both the tractor and trailer parking brake on. Glad hand caps are on the hook here, on the board. Cap them so it'll seal off any air when we go to do future tests. Lock them in place, hold emergency and service. And we release both the tractor and trailer parking brake valve by pushing in the knobs. Open the drain valves in the primary and secondary reservoirs. 
We're going to watch the knobs of the dash here. And at 25 PSI, approximately on both gauges, it popped out. I want you to record the pressure that the red tractor protection valve pops out and the yellow park brake valve knob pop out. So you record that on your sheet. Close the reservoir drain valves, rebuild the system to full pressure. Turn on my ignition again. Watching again on our gauges, light and buzzer. We'll watch when our air dryer kicks off again. Governor cut out was 120 to 125. And at any time working in the shop, you can use the shop air like we're doing here on a, on a tractor. Just have it plumbed into your, uh, either the air dryer or the wet tank. Next step, number seven, we're going to test the operation of the tractor protection valve by pushing in the red knob for our air supply. And then we're going to disconnect the uh, coupling from the bracket or take the cap off. And we'll see that it pops out. Okay. So it popped out for us. And we're down to about 105 PSI. <clears throat> it says, does the knob pop out instantly, instantaneously? Now we lost a little bit of pressure there, but it reacted quick enough with the way the system's set up and I feel that it's working properly. Um, some of them, they literally do sense that uh, large drop of air and will pop out. They're designed to do that. If it does not do that, it constantly loses air. The light and buzz will come back on. That'd be a warning for the driver that we have an issue. But the trailer brakes would also start coming on because there's a loss of air to the uh, parking brakes on that. Next, we're going to reconnect the trailer emergency coupling. And we're going to release the park bracer. Then we're going to open the drain valve in the secondary air reservoir. Secondary on this board is red. Okay. White and purple came on, about 60 PSI. I'll turn it off so we can talk over it. They want to know there's only one system. So I'll walk away. So we're in the cab again looking at the primary and secondary uh, gauges. The secondary, which is the one we drained, is down to zero. The primary has not dropped. Remember, we lost a little bit of air because we released the parking brakes. And you'll notice the parking brake is still released because it is supplied by both primary and secondary air. So that double check valve is working in there. It has been closed off, sealing up the primary. Still continue to supply air. Uh, and the secondary, we didn't lose any more from it, so the parking brake will remain released. So does one system show a loss of air? Yes. If you have a gauge that has two needles, one gauge, two needles, one's for primary, one's for secondary, some trucks are set up like that, verify that the color of the needle is for the proper tank. Secondary air, uh, in this case it would be a red needle, 
and primary air would have a green needle, something to that effect, so they would get the trouble. Does the low uh, pressure indicator buzzer uh, sound at approximately 60 PSI? Well, yes, it did come on. Remember that? I just shut it off so we could talk over it. And because we lost air in the secondary tank, we also lost it in the supply tank. That lets the driver know we've lost air. Now, we still have parking brakes released, and we still have your primary brakes. That system still charged up. It's at 121 wall. It says every axle and every wheel must have brakes on it, and you have to have a split system or a dual system. And does the primary reservoir gauge show any pressure drop? We already stated no, it does not. The next thing they want us to do is apply the service brakes and observe the operation of the service brake chambers and the slack adjuster. So here's our front brakes, here's our back brakes. We'll step on the brakes. There's our treble valve up here. You'll notice the rear brakes are operating. Market brakes released. Service brakes applied. The front, nothing happens because we don't have any air in the secondary. That's our uh, front air supply. The primary is for the rear brakes. So it does movement of the brake chamber push rods occur at the rear axle? That would be answered yes. Does movement of the brake chamber push rods occur at the steering axle? No. Proper operation for a vehicle without an inversion valve. Number 11 then says close the drain valve in the secondary reservoir. We're going to rebuild the air. Close it up. You can once again watch your light and close it. Goes off about 65. To give you plus or minus five on that. We're going to do the same test now, but for the primary system. We're going to check that if we lose air in it, will the secondary uh, maintain air? Will the parking brakes stay released? And we only lose air in one system. Wait for it to kick off, which should be just any second. Now they want us to open the drain valve in the primary reservoir. Question number number 12 says, does one system show a loss of air? And we can say yes. What color is the needle? If it's a single gauge, in this case we have two gauges, it's our primary system, the one that we drained. We're down to zero, and it is important that you drain these tanks completely, so there's no trace of air in there that may give you a false reading on a test. Does the low pressure indicator buzzer sound at approximately 60 psi? The key switch on. Still working, yep. And at about 60, 65, it came on. Does the secondary reservoir gauge show any pressure drop? And absolutely not. We're right up there where we uh, had it when we charged the system. Now, we want you to apply the service brakes for number 13. And we're going to watch our front. And our rear slack adjuster, notice the parking brake is still released. It's a double check now I talked about earlier. Apply the service brakes, front brakes come on, rear brakes, nothing. Again, does movement of the brake chamber push rods occur at the rear axle? In this case, no. Does movement of the brake chamber push rods occur at the steering axle? Yes. I also want to note one more thing. The ignition would still be on and their light and buzzer would still be on. Watch your brake light. Even with one system drain or loss of air in one of the systems, 
your brake light will still work. Why? Because the double check valve that supplies it, it gets air from both primary and secondary. And if one system loses air, check valve closes off, allows the other system to apply air to it, and it can still close that switch and turn on the brake light when we apply the service brakes. So now they want us to close all the drain valves. And we go to our evaluation. So I'll leave the ignition off here. The evaluation is on the third page. And it starts at the top. Governor should cut off air pressure uh, 120 to 130. That's the, the newer specs. And ours did. It was about 125, so it would pass. If you're not within that range, mark it as fail, and we figure out why. Number two, one-way check valves at each reservoir protects air supply in the event of a wet tank failure. We drain the supply tank. These both stay charged, charged by the gauges on the dash, so that would be a pass. If we lose air in either one of those tanks, we have a bad check valve. Very simple fix. Very simple check. Number three, the low air pressure warning device. It comes in, uh, comes on at about 65 PSI, plus or minus five. They give you a little range there. Ours was right around the 65. Light and buzzer came on. The tractor protection valve should pop out uh, 40 plus or minus six PSI. Ours was maybe 30, so ours was a little bit low. We'd have to check that uh, tractor protection valve or run the check, get, run the test again, just to verify that we got a good reading. Uh, sometimes things happen very quick while you're doing the test and it may take a second person to just watch that gauge. Uh, number five, the emergency parking valve pops out 30 plus or minus five. Ours was right around the 30 PSI range, uh, if I observed the gauge correctly, and I would say that that's good. Number six, if the red emergency trailer coupling disconnects, the red knob should pop out instantaneously. We lost a little bit, but it did pop out well within the time for the driver to be able to react and still have air in the tractor. So I would say that passes. Number seven, secondary reservoir drain. Air pressure warning device comes on. The other reservoir shows no loss of air pressure. That's exactly what happened. Driver got the warning, light and buzzer. Other system retained pressure. How do we know that? Parking brakes stayed released. Stop lights still work, so we got double check valves working properly. Number eight, they want to know about the primary reservoir. We drain it, we have the air pressure warning device should come on, which it did. The other reservoir does not lose pressure. So both of those would pass. Number nine, it asks, is your tractor or truck equipped with an inversion valve? Now, based on the uh, stopping the big rigs course, the inversion valve is an optional valve. And if you lose uh, rear brakes and only have front brakes, or if you lose your primary and only have secondary, and there is an inversion valve in there, it will then become active. And when you step on the service brake, it uses air from the secondary to release the parking brakes and apply with heavy spring pressure the rear brakes. You would have you would actually have seen movement at these rear brake chambers and slack adjusters if we had an inversion valve. So that's how you answer that question. How can you tell if the primary system's drained all the way to zero and those rear brakes still come on? You got an inversion valve. If they don't, like our system did not, we don't have an inversion valve. Then, after that, to complete this operations check, we've included that you uh, see your instructor and we'll give you a, a particular valve to find on a vehicle. So you can name the location, the, the type of valve, the model number, maybe a part number if we had to order it, and then describe the function or purpose of the valve. That can come strictly from the textbook or you can take it from any of your training you had on Schoology but give us a detailed function and purpose of the valve that we've assigned to you. And that pretty much concludes the 510 uh, air brake system, the functions check, the operations check for, uh, for diesel technology, heavy equipment technology.